welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and today we are going to be doing the other side of this Carhartt jacket that we did in yesterday's video. Um, for me it's just earlier today but yesterday uh, I posted a video where we did the JT name on the front of this jacket. There you go. Now we're going to do the logo on the back. So what I have here is our sample stitch out that I sent to my customer. It's for the Eagles and Agriculture Group here in my local town. And this is gonna be going on the back of the jacket, right in between the shoulder blades. Um, you guys can probably tell, I can't see that in the frame. I have my table down lower um, just to help me with the hooping process, but it's going to look somewhat like that. <laughs> so hard for me to show you guys on the camera with such a big jacket. But uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. I have my hooping station that is going to help me hopefully uh, hoop this jacket. Uh, lucky me had my 11 by 13 Mighty Hoop order canceled. So that's really unfortunate because I really wanted to use it for this jacket. But you know what? It's got to get done and we're just going to use the regular hoop and pray and hope for the best. <laughs> hey guys, editing Kayla here. Um, I just finished filming the like outro to this video and I just wanted to insert something in here real quick in the beginning of this video to just give a little disclaimer. This video ended up, not just the video, but this jacket ended up being so much more difficult than I was expecting. Trying to make do with my, you know, just regular uh, D size hoop for my EM1010. It was a lot harder, honestly, than I thought it was gonna be. My husband ended up stopping at Home Depot on his way home from work and getting me the clamps to help me keep the hoop together. Um, and I've seen other people do that too. And it worked, but then it took me a while to figure out where to place them on the machine so that it didn't hit the, you know, the neck of the machine and everything else. So it ends up being a little chaotic as you guys will see here in a minute. But I just wanted to give that disclaimer that this is not by any means a tutorial. <laughs> It's not, hey, do it this way. It's a, it's more of a video about, um, I don't have a mighty hoop, so let's see how we can figure this out with the regular hoop is what this is. So it's more of a struggle with me video versus a tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoy it anyways and learn something. If anything, you know, maybe it'll motivate you even more to buy a mighty hoop, I don't know. But it is what it is. I'll get one eventually, but this job ended up being done. So with all that being said, let's get into this chaotic hot mess video. <laughs> so I have, um, I'm going to be using my stitch out to line it up on the jacket. I don't have a paper sent out like I normally do. So we're just going to use the sample stitch out because this is a 12 inch wide design and my printer is only eight and a half by 11. So I'm going to use this to help me line it up and figure out where I want it. I'm not sure which machine I'm going to use today. I have them both on and I have them both set to the same design, but since I don't have that uh, 11 by 13 mighty hoop now, the only size hoop that will work for the TC is the jumbo 14 by 21 frame. You guys, I can like hula hoop with this thing. This is insane. But I tried practice hooping this earlier and it was just so hard with like the shoulder seams and everything. It was so thick and bulky and I just couldn't get it secure. So I was like, man, maybe I can use my EM with this today. And when you lay it, like when you look at the design, it fits in it. I didn't think we could because it was a 12 inch design and you know, this is a eight by 12 hoop, but we have space, we have room. So this hoop actually fits much better on the shoulder blades. So I'm actually really hoping that I can use my EM1010 for this today. So we are just gonna see how it goes. The reason I want to use my TC is one, because it's brand new and I wanna play with it, but two, it has the table. I went in ahead and installed the table today thinking that I was going to use it before I did my practice hooping and I wanted it for extra security because the jacket is so heavy. You guys, I'm really kicking myself for not buying the table for the EM1010 yet. That would really be handy right now. But I used, I actually used this stool. Let's see, I'll show you guys. I actually used this stool and the video that I did for the front to hold up a lot of the weight of the jacket and it actually worked really well. Uh, my husband found that stool in the clearance 
uh, aisle at Home Depot. <laughs> so it worked great. So let's go ahead and get our jacket prepped and ready to go. I am completely unprepared for this jacket. I am out of tearaway. I have the little like eight by eight sheets of tearaway, which was perfect for the front pocket, but I'm out of like my big rolls of tearaway. So I'm gonna use my sticky stabilizer today, which I think will work fine because I was just gonna spray with adhesive anyway. So this just saves me the step of spraying. So, I know I'm super professional, you guys follow me for more pro tips. So I'm going to unzip the jacket and um, I'm not quite sure how far down it's going to be, but I do know that this gives me quite a bit of room. So I'm just going to cut off a decent sized piece and then just stick it to the inside of the jacket, I think. Okay, so I actually just moved my hooping station so that I could get this jacket more flat to get the stabilizer exactly where I want it and not have, you know, wrinkles or anything. Okay, so now I'm gonna peel off the backing of the sticky stabilizer. There we go. to zip the jacket back up. Now putting it on its front. Now I'm going to bring the hooping station back up to my table. Okay, now I'm going to lay the design on top. Okay, now I'm going to measure from this. You can see there's like a, a seam right here and it's like it's just like an extra back of the jacket. So I'm just going to measure the distance from the name on each side and see if it's even. So that is three inches and this is three inches. Look at that guys. I'm not kidding when I say I'm a professional eyeballer, you guys. Now I'm gonna measure from the line to this seam right here. And right there is exactly six inches. And ooh, right there is just a skosh off. So now we gotta Go this way just a tad. Now this is gonna probably move again. There we go, six and six, look at that. Okay, so I'm going to pin this in place. Okay, now double check my measurements. Okay, so I'm actually really, really happy with where I have this placed. I measured from this area in this area and it was really darn close so close that I'm not even gonna mess with it so now I'm gonna take the bottom of my hoop and slide it under the jacket okay so now I'm just going to feel with my hands to straighten it out and make it as even as possible now the only thing that my Mighty Hoop Station is doing for me right now is separating the front zippered layer of the jacket and the back. I tried hooping it just flat on the table and the zipper was so bulky it was throwing me off. So that's the only reason I have this on the Mighty Hoop Station right now. But that looks even on the sides. So now I'm gonna lay this on top and just see if that looks centered and it does for the most part it doesn't look straight let me go up on this side i actually need to remove these two side pins because it wants to go underneath the side of the hoop and i don't want to not be able to take them off once i get it hooped so i'm gonna move this to the side I actually should have loosened the bottom of my hoop before I slid it in. I didn't do that. That's why I can't press it down. But it's easier to reach up here, so I'm going to loosen this top one. So much easier with a mighty hoop, guys, but I will not let this beat me. Okay, guys, honest to goodness, I think I'm going to have to pause and wait till my husband gets home to give me an extra set of hands because as soon as I get all four corners in, it just wants to pop up like that. 
Um, I have the bottom hoop as loose as it can possibly go. So I know my husband has a bunch of like the clamps. So I think that's going to be my only option to be able to get this done. So I'm just going to have to pause and wait till he gets home and finish this later tonight. So sorry, the lighting's going to be different. It's probably going to be way darker later, but that's, that's my only option. I only have a six and a seven year old here with me. So <laughs> I'm going to have to wait till he gets home to help me. So, um, I will see you guys later tonight. Okay guys. It is after dinner now. Um, my husband had to go to the store and get some clamps for me because I I absolutely could not hoop this on my own as you guys saw earlier. I was hoping he already had some of these clamps in his shop and he doesn't, uh, didn't, so he just went and bought some. He actually bought me two sizes because we weren't sure what size we would need. So we, now I have these mini ones plus these ones. And it actually works perfect. And I wasn't even gonna try to film how we did this earlier because it was just absolutely chaotic. I'm holding it all four corners with my arms while he's trying to clamp it, trying to make sure it's straight. We would clamp it and then see that it was crooked after we measured it. It was crazy, but we finally have it. I'm just praying and hoping that it's centered because usually I hold it up and eyeball it after I measure it, make sure it looks good to my eye. And I can't do that now because it's clamped in so many different directions. I can't tell which way is straight. I mean, I my design didn't shift at all. It's exactly where I had it. My hoop is, uh, I measured it from the bottom and it's perfectly even. So we're going for it, okay? I know this is absolute, I know this is absolutely like not a professional video and it's not even a how-to. It's more of like a, uh, hey, how can we make this work when we don't have the right kind of stuff? <laughs> so that's what kind of video this uh, has turned into. So now I'm going to get it over onto my Rekoma. Um, I am going to unzip the front. Actually, let me show you these clamps first. Let me show you how we have it clamped before we start. So we've got one up there and then I've got four down here. Um, I would put one right here, but this is where that screw is so I can't get it tight enough. And then, you know, on each of the corners up there. Um, I do have another one, and I was thinking about doing it right here, but I think it's going to stick and hit the back of my machine too much. But, I mean, it's it's secure. This is flat. Uh, my stabilizer is completely covering the image in the back. So now we're just going to get it onto the machine. Okay, so now we're going to carefully put it on these clamps up here it might prove to be a problem with my brackets might need to readjust that secure okay so now I have it on and I'm just making sure everything's clear underneath um, it took a little bit of finagling back here um, I don't know if you guys can see that but I had let me bring you in closer so I had to angle these up because they were getting stuck underneath the bracket so that's what I did to these two back ones they are angled up and pinching the frame like this right here um, but these ones down here I'm just gonna leave I'm feeling around my whole frame to make sure it didn't pop out anywhere without me knowing and it feels it feels good Feels fine, so now I'm gonna feel from the bottom. I'm just feeling underneath, making sure what I feel from the top is accurate, and it is. I mean, the frame's in, it's secure. Um, so now the only thing left to do, we're gonna trace and then start stitching. So I'm gonna lock my design. Um, I'm gonna trace off of needle number one. Oops. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So there's a lesson learned. So that doesn't work. Okay, guys. So I had to have my husband come back in here and help me for a minute. Um, I had two clamps up and down right here and it wouldn't go under the neck of the machine. So we moved more of them down to the bottom and uh, fixed it. It popped out on the one corner, but I fixed it and it's actually really, really snug right now. I've done several traces. It hasn't popped out and it's good. I have it centered exactly where I want it. 
So at this point, we're just gonna go for it. So this has given me many more problems than I was expecting, but it's good to know how to troubleshoot these things when you don't have the ideal product, you know? Of course, I would love to have a Mighty Hoop for this. I would have had this jacket done hours ago, but we're doing what we can with what we got. And I hope <laughs> you learned something from this video, if anything, what not to do. Uh, so let's, uh, let's just go for it. Like I said, I think I said earlier, I already checked my bobbin. My thread's good to go. I've already traced it and contoured traced it several times to make sure it's perfectly clamped. Uh, so all that's left to do is press start. And I'm really nervous because this is a lot of weight on the brackets. Um, so I might just lightly stand here and just just gently hold it not move it because I don't want to lose my registration or anything but I might just gently help keep some of that weight off and then just hold it as it goes um, so I think that's what I'm gonna do just to be extra safe <music> As you can see, it is the next day. Um, I was up really late last night working on this jacket. Um, it took me a while sitting there and holding it. And of course I started it like right before it was time for my kids to go to bed. So I had to pause it, you know, brush teeth and do the whole bedtime routine and then go back. And then um, I was having tension issues, which I didn't film. I ended up honestly just turning off my camera because I was so frustrated and I was just like I I'm just I'm over it I'm done <laughs> and all I could think of was I really wish I had my mighty hoop right now but it got finished and it looks absolutely amazing it turned out perfect and I honestly couldn't be any happier with it the only way I would be happier is if I had my mighty hoop because it would have been done a lot faster but uh yeah, so this video turned out really, really chaotic. Um, so I'm sorry about that, but I also wanted to, you know, at least have content for you guys. And I do think it's good because not everybody can afford, you know, what is it, $165 Mighty Hoop. So hopefully I was able to show you, even though it was chaotic, you know, how to make do with what you have. Um, and it worked and we were able to get the job done and, you know, it it worked and the job is done. That's all that matters. No matter how you got there, at least we got there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this crazy vlogmas video and I will see you guys tomorrow for our next video.